Hello everyone, this is Lock OS, and in today's video we're going to be covering the settings for DCS World. Uh, this can be a, this is going to be a fairly complicated topic, uh, just because of the breadth of settings. But we're going to try to go ahead and keep it relatively simple for today. Uh, there are guides online uh, by other creators to optimize your build, plus uh, we'll get into another reason why it gets pretty complicated, and th when it gets there I'll explain that those will also need their own videos. So let's start, let's get right to it. Uh, settings can be found here underneath the gear icon for options. Uh, go to options. Uh, first is the system uh, settings, and this sets up most of your stuff for graphics and other things. So textures, train textures, um, water, visibility range, all these are things here are graphics, like say, are graphic settings with uh, textures and train textures being fairly obvious. So uh, you can set like if they're low tech, uh, high quality or low quality. Um, Civil traffic. Uh, this is something that is actually I would recommend. I would recommend to keep this set as default to off. Reason being is that if you're doing a mission and there's a lot and there's a lot of ground units, or you're even engaging, even if there's like only one set of ground units, um, so long as you're engaging ground units on a road, you'll it'll kind of mess up your uh, attack your attackers. And only when it mess up your attack, it'll actually look not very uh, immersive because you'll have um, with civilian traffic a whole bunch of like civilian cars and buses and vehicles uh, on the roads going back and forth, and they're technically not map objects. Uh, they're technically not like they're not technically objects you can engage. Uh, so you'll they'll just like mess up your like they'll mess up your visuals. You'll they'll just run in front of, like they'll also because they're literally you don't I don't have a physical body. But they'll literally drive through. Your actual ground units, and it's just better to keep this off. Um, mission to mission, uh, the mission editor creator can force this option to be on, but in the case that they don't set the option, I would just keep civilian traffic to off. Uh, you won't notice anything uh, flying fairly high, or even flying like at a decent clip in cities. Uh, it's nice if you're doing like civil flights. Or civil aviation flights, but if you're doing anything in a combat scenario, um, just keep it off. It it's more immersive when you have uh, your own ground units um, moving through a city, and like civilian traffic isn't like flowing through them, isn't like driving through them and like, out the other side like a ghost. Water's fairly exempt, uh, pretty expansory. Uh, visibility range. I would keep this. Uh, I would pr try to uh, try to set this as high as you can. Um, this is how far uh, the map and all the associate and like all like the static objects and stuff. How far do they um, render out towards? And in DCS, you want to try to keep this as as far as possible, so that um, you can actually get visual on your targets from further out. Plus, uh, when you get to some like really nice wide open areas of the map, uh, you'll actually be able to see. You'll actually look really nice being able to see that far out. For the longest while, I actually didn't realize I had it set um, to like high. Um, but setting it to extreme is really nice. Um, you can see really far out, really adds to the game. Uh, heat blur, basically this is a, you can actually set this off low or high. Uh, this is basically the effect of, um, uh, the engine exhaust coming, uh, just because the engine exhaust is so hot, it, uh, distorts the air. So you get that kind of effect going on. Shadows is fairly obvious. Uh, shadow blurring, secondary shadows. I don't usually play with that too much. Uh, resolution. Fairly self-explanatory. Uh, I set it to like uh, I have it set to the maximum my monitor can support. I know people play around with resolution, um, but I know people play around with resolution for spotting purposes, so you can easily see uh, other aircraft like further out. But I just generally keep it as um, my default screen resolution, because that way, if you alt tab in and out of DCS for any reason, uh, you're, just, you're not going to get any weird effect of the screen just resizing itself. Uh, the number of monitors, the resolution of cockpit displays, you want to try to keep this as relatively high as possible so you can actually read your displays. Uh, and then you have all your normal graphics effects, um, MSA, depth of field, lens effects is, uh, I like to keep this off just because it's a little bit annoying in game uh, to have the lens effect when it's kind of like, it's not really, it's not, it doesn't look bad, it's just kind of annoying. Um, motion blur, you can turn it on or off. Uh, and adjust how much you have it on. Clouds. Um, this is the this is the quality of the 
It's not the old. It's the um, volumetric clouds. That's what the, that's what the new clouds are called. Develop this. Uh, this is the quality of the volumetric clouds. Uh, you have different options for your graphics down here. Uh, what format you want your screenshots in? Uh, you can do JPEG, PNG, BMP. I actually changed it to PNG because apparently that's uh, lossless and it's really high quality. Uh, go up here, you can see how far uh, cl uh, cut clutter and grass goes out towards, um, how thick the forests are, the details of the forest, uh, details of the scenery, pre how far you want things to preload in um, from your aircraft. Uh, I would try to keep this as high as possible. It'll, some, it'll, it will slow down loading in, you loading into the game. But this will act which is really good for long uh setting this as high as possible is good for longer missions where you're going to be um naturally like flying a long distance so that way you, you don't get any screen you don't get any um game stuttering from it not loading in yet. From uh, as the game loads it in because it's not loaded in yet. So I would just generally keep this as high as possible, especially if you like to do long flights. Chimney smoke density, you can play around with this. This is how dense the chimney smoke is. Uh you can leave it like somewhere in the middle. Uh, gamma is how obviously uh, bright the screen is. Uh, I like to try to keep this somewhat darker. Uh, uh, we get a bit more rich colors and things are um, as blown out. Uh, you can adjust this also per map. Some maps need a higher gamma, some maps need a lower gamma. It kind of depends. Uh, external field of view, I like to leave it towards the middle as is. And then you have all your different um, graphic settings down here again. Clock global illumination, I would keep this on. Uh, that way you can, uh, and we get some more light in the cockpit. Uh, scale the messages for the GUI and the, mu uh, and the uh, messages. Uh, the messages are things that uh, Mission Editor can put up, and they'll be usually in the top right hand of the side of the screen. Um, so just keep those at, I would at least keep those at a readable uh, level, but not too big so that they blow out the entire screen and you can't read or you can't see where you're flying. Uh, you can turn on rain right, droplets on and off. You can do Vink Sync. You can. Um, I like to put full screen on just because it makes the. Um, you want as much re screen real estate as possible in this game, so keep it on. Uh, I would just keep leave this as is because if it's full screen, you don't really need, need that. And that's pretty much all the graphic settings that there are. Uh, you can actually set up custom uh, graphic settings, and if you're a VR user, um, that'd probably be for the best. Because uh, that way you can swap between a 2D view, like a 2D gra set, uh, graphic settings, and then a VR graphic settings where you tune different things to get that sweet spot between uh, visuals and performance. Moving on, uh, controls. Uh, this is very important, especially when you are when you first get an aircraft, as well as sometimes after an update, because sometimes updates will uh, clear out this page, sadly. But you can go ahead and go into all your different aircraft. And let's see here, we're just gonna, and also even different stations on uh, set aircraft. So we're just gonna go ahead and pick uh, Mirage 2000C. And you can see here uh, that if you want to toggle the air brake, uh, it, this is the category of where it's located in the actual cockpit. Uh, not, uh, not, this is not, this is not my real life HOTAS, this is the HOTAS on the actual in game co uh, plane. So, and then you can go in here and then you can do toggle. So, so if we want to talk about the air brake, we hit the B key, and or I set it up for my uh, ho, uh, my, uh ho tap on uh, my stick to do left control and joy button five. Note on this, um, several notes. If I wanted to see what was bound to, for example, my let's see, we don't have we I don't see the C key listed. So if I wanted to know what the C key was, um, what the C key controlled, I can hit C. And it's telling me it's going to command the air-to-air -air gun uh, symbology and uh, what and the um yeah it's commanding the air-to-air -air gun mode with the C key. If I hit the M, if I hit say the uh, G key, uh, it's toggling the landing gear. It's same thing with the same thing with your other controls. Uh, gun trigger is my uh, trigger button on my gun uh, my joystick. Uh, nose wheel steering is on uh, the middle button on my flight stick. And so on and so forth. You can also uh, select modifiers. So let's go ahead and do navigation lights toggle. I could do add modifiers. I can do a shift and then joy button four. And you could do you can do this also with your keyboard where you could add a mod a keyboard modifier. Uh, usually it's like the shift, control, alt, and uh, both on the left and right side. And then add any uh, add, e add either a um, 
a keyboard letter or a joystick button and you can actually set up a whole bunch of different controls that way. So you can easily expand out your controls if you have a limited control set up kind of like I do at the moment. I do have plans to actually build up my own uh, system. It's just, it takes a while. So that's it for controls. Uh, this is definitely something that every, I will go, this is one of those things I'm gonna have to create a separate video for going over, um, I talk about different aircraft, like recommended controls and what you should have definitely bound and memorized as well as explain how, uh, what certain controls or how to find certain controls. Because uh, sometimes with different aircraft, uh, you will get situations where the the mic button isn't listed necessarily as a mic button. Like, it'll be sometimes listed under PP, uh, PTT, which is push to talk, stuff like that. Gameplay uh, is the next topic. And gameplay, you have different difficulties you can set up. Uh, the mission editor and the, or the multiplayer server will sometimes, if not generally, enforce their own difficulty settings. Uh, but there are times where it won't, they will not enforce their own difficulty settings, and it'll instead use the difficulty settings found here. So you can have tooltips. Um, things I would recommend, uh, game flight mode, wouldn't recommend, um, unless you want to play this more like an Ace Combat game and you don't want to go into the hardcore flight sim part of it. Uh, I would generally leave that off. Uh, radio assist. Uh, this is, it provides a voice cues, sort of like more of an, again, sort of more of an Ace Combat style um, thing where it tells you, or, it's, or they'll have like, someone tell you, hey, you have a missile inbound, missile inbound, or like, you're in range, you're in range, um, stuff like that. I'd like to leave these two off. Um, Radio Assist, I would also keep in mind that uh, a lot of things like that in game actually do have in-game sounds. So like, uh, if, you're, if there's a missile launch, um, you really don't need radio assist. Uh, your RWR will very much tell you that there's a threat inbound. You just have to know what exactly the tones and the frequencies are. But once you know, but once you generally have encountered it a few times as a player starting out, you'll generally know that across all aircraft, what it sounds like to get a missile fired on you. Because they're very similar throughout every aircraft, even across NATO and um, Warsaw Pact aircraft. Tooltips are very useful. I would keep this on because there are sometimes controls hidden behind other controls, especially um, with the throttle on most aircraft, where the throttle will sometimes block something that's right behind or around it. So by having tooltips enabled, you can actually know what you're clicking on. And that's very important because sometimes you can end up, if you don't have this enabled and you click on something, sometimes the game thinks you mean, sometimes you think you're clicking on one item, but the game realizes, oh, you're clicking on this instead, and it can really cause mayhem. Uh, crash auto recovery is basically, um, you could respawn in the middle of a mission if you uh, die. Easy communication, you don't have to worry too much more about the, you don't have to worry as much about the radios. It's a little bit easier to communicate with the AI. Um, easy communication doesn't apply to SRS, which is a popular um, vo uh, in-game uh, voice system that's used to talk on the multiplayer service. This is just easy communication only applies to talking between you and the AI. Uh, padlock basically is, it is, I find it more annoying than useful, but if you want to, um, but that's only because um, it's sometimes hard to unpadlock your view. And this basically is you could padlock a target or a ground point on the ground and your head will actually track it. So it's kind of useful, kind of not, um, Padlock can be pro. Uh, it would be more useful if I can find like an easy key button somewhere that I can use to un uh, un unpadlock my view from something. Unlimited fuel, unlimited weapons basically means what uh, it says on the tin. Immortal means you can't be destroyed. Uh, I think you can still technically crash uh, on the ground, but like you won't necessarily die from it. You'll just end up in a weird like state and you won't be able to take off again. Um, like you'll end up like upside down aircraft point towards the ground, you're not taking off from that. Uh, allied flight reports, I will leave this off because they can, your AI wingman can be very chatty at times. So having allied flight reports off is good just to keep your uh, chatter down to the more or less essential uh, flight communications. Uh, cockpit visual recon mode allows you to spot uh, ground targets from the air. Um, although certain servers have their own mechanics for doing uh, 
recon uh, recon modes of their own. I don't generally find this useful. Um, it's just something that just doesn't really find a lot of use uh, by anyone. Uh, I'm gonna check the sat nav. Always enable this. Uh, certain aircraft in game break if they don't have access to sat nav. Um, Unrestricted sat nav basically means if for whatever reason, um, either the country that your aircraft is assigned to or your um, mission time is set before satellite navigation was a thing, which I believe was sometime in the mid to late 80s, it'll actually break the aircraft. This is especially true, I believe, for the F-18A, so the F-A-18C Hornet. Uh the, F, the, yeah, the Hornet will definitely break if it does not have access to satellite navigation. It's just something that the module needs. Uh, F-10 view options. Uh, for cinematics and just general fun, I like to leave it on all at all times. That way you can uh, look at, you can get an idea of where enemy aircraft are. Uh, you can look at, you can basically uh, get an idea. Uh, you can use the F-10 map to like get different like views um, from the, like, the enemy aircraft. You can also use it, I like to use it as a training tool, also to see what my sensors are, like if I wanted to, uh, to, for instance, get an idea of what my sensor is seeing, and like making sure I'm doing things right, I like to leave it on all, because in that way I can see like, okay, my weapon is fired, fired on the right target. Uh, I did actually pick up all the hostiles that I should have. Um, my weapon is tracking, stuff like that. It's general, I would always just generally leave this to all, um, if you want to give yourself more of a challenge and the mission editor for whatever mission you're flying didn't set it, then I would go back in here and go to um, Fog of War or My or, uh, my AC. If you really want to set yourself a challenge, map only. Map only means that you don't even see your own aircraft on the map. It's only it's just the map. It isn't as useful, um, especially because... At that point, the only point that the map really serves is if you get horrendously lost and you know you're over, like, a certain city, but it's not on your kneeboard map, so you have to bring up the F-10 map. So I would generally leave this on all just because, it's like I said, it's more fun, get some good cinematic views. It's a good training tool. Mini HUD. Uh, Mini HUD actually brings up sort of like a miniature HUD. Uh, it's useful for some certain aircraft, but I never, I've never usually used it. Uh, mirrors are useful if you need to look behind your aircraft, but they are graphically ta taxing. So if you need to get some more, uh, more uh, frame, if you need to get more uh, frames per second, uh, I would. You could definitely turn off mirrors, and you'll generally be okay. Uh, mirrors, mirrors and dogfights are nice. If you, if you learn to pay attention to them, and they actually manage to catch the enemy behind you. They're not super useful at times, because uh, unless they're approaching at a certain angle, the mirrors generally won't pick them up. So you can leave it on uh, or take it off. Uh, if, they, if you do need the extra performance, just take it off. You'll be fine. Uh, it's a lot easier and honestly a lot better to just uh, take your in-game uh, character head and look to the left or to the right. Uh, that way you'll get a better idea of like what's behind you. Uh, hiding the control stick, you can have this uh, always hidden. I like to leave it on just because um, there is pretty much for every every control stick in game can be hidden actually in game. So that would just leave that as as um, unselected. Uh, F10 user map user marks, leave this on. Some modules and features actually uh, use F10 map icons to set up uh, waypoints way easier than it normally would, otherwise would be. So this is a really good quality of life thing. Just keep it on. Wake turbulence, uh, it adds more challenge to like air-to-air -air refueling and flying informations. I would leave it on. Brings up the challenge a little bit more. Editor icon style, uh, between NATO and Russian uh, style editor icon, um, mission editor icons. Uh, this will also affect your F-10 map icons. Avionics language, I would just keep it, uh, if you can either have it to the native avionics language, so a French aircraft would have French avionics, so on and so forth, Russian aircraft would have Russian. Um, for the sake of sanity, I leave it on English. Units, I'm an American, so I use Imperial. You can use metric if you want to. Um, certain aircraft, 
honor the system. Others don't. So others, um, I think it's like the MiG-21 only has metrics uh, units. Other um, aircraft can swap between the two. So just keep them, just keep that, just keep in the back of your mind that not all aircraft will be able to swap between metric and imperial units. GFX, uh, you can do basically you can you have no GFX, a uh, more gamified version or a more simulation based for a version of GFX. Uh, labels, uh, these allow you to uh, visually ID targets um, further out, and you can do like a dot a symbol abbreviation, a, like an abbreviated uh label of what the target is or a full label. Uh, when you're learning the game and you're trying to learn and get an idea of like what each unit type looks like, I would just leave labels on full. Uh, certain mission, ed certain servers and possibly certain single player missions uh, might enforce their own uh, their own setting here. Um, I would just leave, like I said, when you're learning the game for the first time or if you're not really familiar with what, what aircraft look like or what or more particular, what ground units look like, uh, I would just leave it on in, in full, just so you get an idea of like, oh, okay, so like that's how you learn how to spot. That's how like you can determine like what an aircraft is, what's just a random speck of dust on your screen, um, what the aircraft type is. It'll help you. With, it's a good training aid, but I like to fly. If, but um, I'm at least experienced enough to not need them to uh, fly right now. Uh, birds. This is the percentage a uh, chance that a bird strike will happen to your aircraft. I believe, there we go, 100 is uh, set to the normal, bur like, e uh, eagle is the, how do I phrase this? It's the, what they believe would be a normal amount of birds in the, at the altitudes that birds would normally be at. So basically, near ground level, this would be at 100%, and 100 percent bird level that's like normal the normal amount of birds that you would see at that level or you could jack it up to a thousand and that's 10 times the amount of birds that you would normally encounter at that like very low altitude level and this is very important because apparently bird strikes are a thing in game however i don't think anyone has it set to anything other than zero this game is difficult as is to not have to worry about bird strikes. I will have to um, try and experiment in game to see if bird if uh, the bird strike percentage actually does anything. Uh, but I don't know if it's if it's one of those older features that's always been there and no one really plays with, or it's just um, just a feature that's been broken for a long time. You can also have uh, presets here where like, no where. You can actually override. Um, actually, I didn't realize this. It just pro it's, this man just popped up, or it's just something that's just always been hiding in this corner down here. Presets. You can have this to set. Uh, you can use. You can have it so that you force the presets on the mission, and not the other way around. Um, I would leave this off at first. Uh, that way, you get to experience the mission as the mission designer intended. But if you're having difficulty with the mission or something, uh, you can go ahead and click this, and then you can actually. Um, Use your presets here. Miscellaneous, a uh, whole bunch of odds and ends here. Player external views, spectator external views, nearest uh, F5, nearest uh, aircraft, to get like, an external padlock on the nearest aircraft. F10 is the uh, AWACS view, F11 is the free camera. Uh, I would leave these on. Get some, You can get some good cinematics, you can get some views around your aircraft. Just, I would just leave that as, as is. Uh, you can have the head movement um, just affected by the G-forces. Uh, force feedback, if you have a force feedback enabled stick, you can enable that to like get the get, enable that system on your actual uh, stick. Uh, this is useful. So you can have the, uh, you can have the flight or your HOTAS system synchronized with your copper controls. Random system failures, I would leave this off. Um, generally, it's something that can be enabled in the mission. But uh, and I would leave it so that uh, that if the mission editor doesn't, if the mission creator doesn't want uh, random system failures, uh, I would say you don't don't add this on top of that. Uh, this can this could potentially break missions because DCS is does actually enable 
aircraft individual aircraft systems to fail out mid-flight and it's possible you could be somewhere and then oh no your engine blows up or like your um, your alternator goes dead you don't want that on a you don't want to be encountering that on like a multiplayer server or on a uh, single player mission where the mission designer did not intend for that to happen but if you want to have fun you can enable that and uh torture yourself that way uh get good with the emergency procedures first and in fact as a if you are a newer player don't turn this on you're going to have enough pro you're going to have enough on your plate learning your aircraft for the first time without random system failures and happening uh you can save snap views you can show the part uh you can show the part pilot body in the cockpit uh, as a default you can uh disable the part of the, the pilot body um uh, model in the in game when you're flying and you can disable it enable it it's i would just keep it on for immersion's sake uh it's just that the pilot cockpit uh, the pilot the pilot body in the cockpit does block a lot of switches on the uh, left and right console uh you can have track ir external views uh, so you can use track ir on external views which is useful if you have it uh chat window at start i like to leave this off just because it adds a whole bunch of clutter uh, you might want to leave it on if you're joining a server for the first time because usually the chat window over here on the left hand side will be in yellow when you join a server for the first time usually has a lot of useful information that uh, you might want to look up and at least uh at least at least browse over if not uh copy links read up see what's going on so I would just, but I, but I, but I, generally the servers I play on are, I've been playing on for quite a while, so I just leave that disabled. Uh, auto login, just leave it on because it's nice. Uh, Clutch statistics, this helps ED with um, information gathering if they need information like on like what like what's going on with like like what not necessarily what, I don't know if it applies to modules, but like this definitely applies for um, bug fixing and stuff like that. Uh, coordinate display. This is the format that the this is the default format that the game uh, gives you in the F10 map for coordinates. Pick this so that it fits the aircraft you are at least currently flying or the one you fly the most. Um, different aircraft use different coordinate systems for the navigation, um, so you don't want to use you don't want to input the wrong uh, coordinates into the aircraft. Because other, because like even though some of these are very very similar, with like lat long, standard, decimal minutes, and precise, uh, it's usually the last couple of digits that are off, and then that could throw off. And if you don't put in the right digits, it could throw off um, weapon systems and targeting um, for like long range weapon delivery. F two view effects. I uh, just leave it on as none. You can adjust the theme from here. You can also adjust the theme from the main menu. Uh, you can allow server servers to take um, a screenshot of the game session. Uh, I would just enable that just because um, I see that enabled. Uh, this is the mission editor auto save interval. Uh, I like to leave it at like 20 minutes so that way it's not always saving, but it's always saving often enough that I'm not going to lose too much progress. Overlays. Uh, you can have controls indicator. Uh, basically, this is a little like uh, so like a little like not only a menu but a little um, window that pops up that shows you the position of the, your in-game controls. So you can get an It's really useful for um, showing other people like, what your control settings are at during different uh, steps of the, uh, the operation, especially useful for helicopter pilots. Uh, cockpit status bar. This is useful for getting your starting location in game. So if you need to enter in your starting coordinates for your INS alignment for a certain aircraft, you can use that to uh, set that. Plus, you can also get the in-game time and some other uh, minor things like that. Uh, battle damage assessment. This is useful, especially when you're first learning the game, to determine or to at least figure out, like, are your weapons dealing damage? Because that is a thing in this game. You can actually have a perfectly or a nearly perfect uh, drop of a weapon. And you would think, oh, the splash damage would have killed it because uh, it like, literally like dropped like, a foot away from that target. And then it turns out, no damage. Or like you can fire a ma like a maverick at a ship, and then you realize like, oh, I killed that ship, and then you realize you only did like 
one percent hit point dam. He only, only did like one percent damage to that ship with a maverick. So I would do. I would keep this on. I would turn this on um, when you're when you're learning an aircraft and or weapon system. Uh, but I like. But I uh, I generally have enough experience to know just leave it off um, to know what does what against what. So I leave this off. Also, cap, cockpit status bar and controls indicator, and I believe even battle damage assessment. assessment uh, these are the default settings if they're on or off. You can also in game turn them on and off um, with a uh, key with a key bind. Um, that way, if you need to look them up, you can look them up. Uh, this just is expect, like cockpit status bar I use pretty frequently. So cockpit status bar I have um, I know that's I think control Y um, to bring it up to look over it to see where I need um, where I'm at, what time it is, all that fun stuff. Uh, dynamic radio. Um, this is for the in-game radio system. Uh, generally, no one uses it. So I would just stick to SRS and not worry about dynamic radio, at least at the moment. Maybe one day people will start using this, but I don't really usually find that to be the case. Audio, uh, different volume settings up here. Uh, here like in helmet, uh, this kind of sort of puts it sort of like almost like you're wearing earmuffs. So it kind of uh, deafens some sounds and brightens them, um, but leaves other sounds like normal. Like so, like your like all your like your system sounds will be perfectly um, loud and bright because they be piped into your headphones, and like your radio comms will be normal because like they're piped into your headphones. But like uh, afterburner, engine sounds, stuff like that will be a bit muffled. I like to keep it on because it's I think it's a little more cooler that way. Uh, keeps the and it keeps the important sounds like brighter and more uh, vibrant. Uh, G breath effect. Uh, basically, if you're pulling heavy G's, it'll your character your in-game pilot will start making uh, heavy breathing sounds. Log, loud cockpit afterburner sound, definitely enable this. Uh, this will help you as a virtual pilot to determine if your afterburner is engaged because it's really hard to tell um, without the physical sensations and whatnot of a real, that a real pilot would encounter if your afterburner is on or off. Uh, there's other ways to tell, but sometimes you might not notice those ways on until you look at your fuel gauge and realize it's half empty. Uh, this basically turns off, turns on and on the uh, if you can hear the uh, your friendly AI talking over uh, comms. Subtitles are if the is this something that's enabled through uh, the mission editor. Uh, certain audio files will have subtitles. Uh, you can turn them on or off. Uh, hopefully, um, there's other ways to enable this. Um, sometimes they will send a message instead of subtitles. So uh, I would you I would just keep this on in general, just because that way you can uh, have visual and you can read uh, what's what uh, what's been what's being said on the radio. It's always just a good thing thing to have. Uh, messages don't take up too much space on your screen. Uh, just leave it on, especially if it's also especially useful if. Um, during like uh, not briefings, but um, sometimes during tutorials, uh, they might use subtitles. Uh, I don't know if they use subtitles for messages. So leave it on for tutorials so you can read the tutorials. Also, if in an in-game mission, uh, someone's trying to give you coordinates, definitely have subtitles on because then that way you can just look it up and you can just type it in, and that way you don't have to remember or try to interpret what they said for all the digits for like a. Uh, the actual coordinates, because you don't you, you don't want to miss fat finger, or you you don't want to type in a seven when they said in like a six or something. Oh, so if you have uh, also any of the, if you want your cockpit sounds or radio messages to uh, play while you're outside the cockpit, you can enable that. Uh, voice chat. Um, this enables or disables the uh, in-game voice chat. I disable it just because I know that the servers I play on. Uh, use SRS. Uh, if maybe if I was doing a private server and like I just had like if I had like one or two people over, I might use the in-game comms. But in general, I would just I just keep voice chat off. Um, play audio while in background. If you minimize the game, you can play that. You can have the audio play in the background, and this sets up your uh, your inputs and outputs up here. All right. Trying to not uh, drag this video out too much longer. I think I'm hopefully doing a pretty good time. Special. Uh, I can go through here, and every single module, including some third-party modules and mods, 
like the uh, DCS um, SRS is the radio system I was talking about by the way with SRS have their own special options that you have to set up so let's see here let's pick a one that has a because a pick a good one has a lot of special options uh, F14 so F14 has a um, radio member radio menu and PTT behaviors so you can set like um, this uh, F14 is unique, by the way, because I think it's one of the few modules that it automatically has SRS integrated into it. So you can use, uh, don't use default PTT radio, member, radio menu buttons for SRS. Uh, you can do all sorts of things down here. Um, to set the, uh, how Jester actually works for AI. Uh, let's see here. Apache. This is a good one. You can do things here for Apache, like, uh, Hello mounted sight, you can use the special menu to like adjust like if you want to do the right eye, the left eye, the both eyes for different hello mounted sights. Um, stuff like that. Um, I won't go into too much detail here. Uh, mainly because uh, there's a lot to go over. And I would probably go into each individual aircraft separately to uh, explain all their different special special options just because it's, it gets that detailed and that complicated. Um, I do wanna show one other thing that's useful though in the special options. Let's see here if I have it here. Ah, uh, one important thing for um, special options, by the way, is usually the cockpit language can be adjusted from here. So for the Mirage 2000, that's a French aircraft, you can set the cockpit language to English as default. Uh, normally the cockpit would be in French, but if you wanna, uh, to aid sort of you, in, um, to, to aid you in learning the cockpit, uh, you can have the cockpit, you can have the cockpit uh, laid out in English. So that way uh, it's a little bit easier to read, it's a little bit under, easier to understand. Um, uh, it's a little bit more intuitive that way. But if you get really confident with the aircraft and you just naturally get an idea of like where buttons are, uh, you can go switch back to default and it'll put it back into its uh, native country of origins um, language. That way then you can, you can be a bit more immersed that you actually are a Frenchman in a French pi uh, jet. But for me, uh, I have a lot of aircraft that I fly, so I just keep the cockpit language just to English just to keep my keep it easier on myself. Let's see here. Yeah. So I use English metric cockpit for the MiG-21. You can have it there. Um, IL-16, I-16, you can, set, you can set that to English. Oh, stuff, all that kind of fun stuff. So that's pretty much it for special that I wanted to go over for like general stuff, especially, I, I especially wanted to go over the fact that um, don't be like uh, don't be afraid with um don't be afraid if a kind of a cockpit is of a um is a foreign cockpit you can use uh, a lot of the aircraft have that uh customized cockpit that you can uh, switch to a um and either as part of a mod or part of the aircraft in general uh, standard aircraft uh you can switch it to a uh english speaking cockpit or an english uh, labeled cockpit for ease of use and lastly, we have the VR menu. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot say too much about VR because I am not a VR user. But if you need to set VR stuff, um, this is where you set it up. Uh, in addition to the system where you can set up your graphics to adjust for a VR headset, uh, you can use this to actually uh, fine tune your VR experience. So that's it for the settings option here in DCS. Uh, Go ahead, play around with the, uh, you're going to want to spend a decent amount of time uh, jumping in between, say, a, a free flight mission and the uh, the settings. Uh, I should mention also, before I go back over the system settings, I should mention that some of these can be adjusted in-game, others cannot. Uh, so I would just, in fact, very. I don't think very few of these settings here can be adjusted uh, in once you're actually in a mission. So I think gamma might be, is like one of the few that you can. Gamma and field of view, I think are the only two that can be changed. Um, so you're definitely gonna wanna spend a lot of time uh, playing around with this. 
um, getting dialing in the performance. Uh, you don't need 60 FPS to play DCS, but I wouldn't aim for anything lower than a consistent like 40. So play around with it. Um, hope that helps. And and that's pretty much it for settings. Uh, until we get to actually talking about individual aircraft and what the setting menu entails for them, uh, this is Lock OS signing out.